Asante, asante sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. So much has happened that this week feels like two months, Mazi. I'm Sokoto of Bangi that was going at 100 shillings, now is going at 400. We are making progress. While congratulating police bosses in Mount Kenya, in the Mount Kenya region for the war on illegal drugs, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa has said that he is happy that bank prices have gone up from 100 to 400 shillings a roll. It's becoming uh, uh, unaffordable. And that is the right thing because the police are so heavy on banking. So while when you use the risk is so high when I get a pesa. It's an interesting way to measure progress <laughs> in the war against <laughs> illegal drugs. What wanna say ma iki and levo be ya bangi tafikia be ya unga. Hey, and Kakamega has also been on the spot this week after reports that the county will be spending almost nine hundred thousand shillings to transport contaminated a maze from Mukumu girls to Mombasa to be destroyed professionally. <laughs> I do not appreciate the vocabulary that was used here. Transporting maize from Kakamega to Mombasa to be destroyed professionally. <laughs> <laughs> now, najwa kuna mtu mali, najwa kuna mali watu, anajwa ta imi najwa, kama kuna mali watu who destroy chakula. <laughs> Nikakamega. And I think that's why that's why <laughs> I think I think that's why they had to add professionally. Some people are asking, Nayu Chumi, why does the county government need to spend almost a million shillings to transport maize to be destroyed in Mombasa, a task that can be carried out in Kakamega by eight people for free? <laughs> Those are people who do not understand the magnitude and the delicate nature of that initiative. We have a great show lined up for you. In fact, I dare say this has to be one of the most interesting conversations we have ever brought you on this show. Uh, two of our guests are air, have been air traffic controllers, uh, one of the most high-pressure jobs in the world. In simple terms, these are the people tasked with the responsibility of giving instructions instructions uh, to pilots so that they can fly safely, and efficiently, and quickly. So basically, our new wale wase uingiza mandege kwa mashimo, like ni kama wase wa mat. Muna understand. So, uh, we have Beatrice Atieno and Elijah Nyakoyo Obongo in the house! Yeah. Asante. Thank you. Asante sana. Our other guest is a self-made businessman. Most Kenyans may recognize him in the car sales market, but on the side, he is a trained pilot who has just gotten his private flying license and now working on a commercial one. Calif Cairo is in the house. Yeah. Asante. We'll be talking to them in a bit, but first, we have now gathered enough evidence that being successful can be as simple as looking the part. Joshua Kiprop made a... <laughs> A clean, a clean 100,000 shillings just for looking like Kiharu MP did in your. I know some people have criticized Meshimiwa for uh, giving out the money. Oh, Bonan and Patia Pesa, why is he giving him the money? What has the guy done? You people don't understand. With how hard Meshimiwa has worked to be where he is, he could not afford Kujiona Akiwa Mesota. <laughs> yes. Maze, Dindinyoro aliangalio msea kasema, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Let me boost my image with 100,000. <laughs> now, this is not the first time someone has been rewarded for looking like a politician. Mnakumbuka mm. uunye? Exactly. Well, this gentleman was so determined to meet President Uhuru Kenyatta Juwana Fanana that I saw a video of him refusing to look like his real brother. You have a brother? Yes. You look like him? No. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not all. We could go on and on. Hata wa Jakoya alikuwa na lookalike before the elections. But immediately after kulienda vile lienda, uo lookalike aliyavu kutafta job ya kufanana na Rick Ross. At this rate, I know you're already wondering why we do not have, uh, we have not seen a lookalike wa atuli. It's two reasons. One, hakuna mtu wakona picha ya atuli akiwa mdogo. And two, <laughs> two uh, looking like atuli is DJ Shiti's retirement plan. <laughs> And I believe it's accurate to say that there's a business of looking like other people. In simple terms, um, to be successful, you must start looking successful. 
In fact, word is that from looking like President Uhuru, Michael Gitonga was offered a car, land, he made some money as a fake Uhuru. Looking like Uhuru is so valuable, you can now guess how much the real Uhuru has made just for being himself. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, please, and this is advice and an appeal, if there is, find out if there is money in how you look like. And think about it. How, how, do you, how do you look at someone like Kiprop in the eye and tell them, if you want to make it in life, you need to be yourself. <laughs> when he has just made 100k being someone else. <laughs> <laughs> now, and this business of looking like someone else seems to be booming that in the finance bill of 2023, the government has decided to cash in by introducing new taxes targeting looks. The Treasury is yet again targeting Kenya's 20 billion shillings beauty products and cosmetics industry with a proposal to slap excise duty at 5% on weaves, artificial nails, artificial beards and human hair. I was this week old when I learned that there are fake beards. Imagine. And now people will have to be taxed for that. Imagine kujipata umelipa umechelewa kulipa rent juu melipia ndevu. As in... As in... Eh, Buddha! Eh, mazi, ukunyo angi pombe, pese hako unapeleka nga wapi? Now, basically, KRA has decided to do to men what Elon Musk did to Twitter users. Men will now have to pay extra for verification. Hakuna ndevu za bure. Eh, we Buddha, mazi, kwanu linyo ndevu? Eh, mazi. Wachana, wachana na KRA. Kwanza kuna bill flani wamepitisha mazi. Imefanyata shafi ya mekuwa msupa. Taxing hair products. I wonder where the government is getting these ideas from. Yeah. How much did this hair cost? Okay, this one went for, you know, 185,000. Hang on, you need to say this again. Yeah. How much did your hair cost? 185,000 Kenya shillings. All right. Yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm, I want to do a guesstimate real quick here. That's about $2,500, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, approximately. Yeah. You have had hair that cost half a million Kenya shillings? 450,000 Kenya shillings. Yes. A weave that cost 450,000 Kenya yes, shillings. Yes, it was custom made for me. I see. I get the creativity. Imagine now, now imagine how much the government can make from Pretty Vichy alone. <laughs> yes, I believe most of you guys have seen Yes. That was, that, that was before a few billions were set aside. Now, that's the before photos. Now, here's an interesting twist to the lookalike story. What is that Kiprop has been complaining after Didi Nyoro gave him 100k for looking like him? He says the money was not enough, as he was hoping to get 500k. Now, people are bashing him, accusing him of being ungrateful and entitled. You guys are wrong. And I think Honorable Didi Nyoro actually committed an offense by giving Kiprop less money than he deserves. Hear me out. To give an impression of how hard it is to look like Ndidi Nyoro, imagine only one person has managed in the whole country so far. <laughs> we una complain at si ufanane na Ndidi Nyoro ukuleyo 100k basi. <laughs> and here's the crime committed by Muheshimiwa. Now that we have uh, justified why the guy deserves 500k, let's go back to the finance bill of 2023 and see why Muheshimiwa has committed a crime. Among the proposals, the Treasury wants every Kenyan who earns 500,000 shillings and above to be taxed at 35%, as opposed to the current selling rate of 30%. This is in line with the promise by President William Ruto to ensure that those who earn more remit more to the taxman. Mheshimiwa giving Kiprop less than 500,000 is tax evasion. Namtu asijaribu kusema it's not what it looks like. <laughs> exactly. So now, um, to our audience members, uh, what's your take on the new introduced taxes, especially kwa iso stories are uh, ku tax beauty products na fake names? Uh -huh. I do know that we, we live in a generation whereby people do care about their looks. So, um, alafu unapata pia vitu zimeko expensive, especially like you, you guys have heard about Vera. Human hair is really expensive. I mean, the industry, I know. Yes. So, ata tunajua with this tax, it's going to be actually tough. But either way, with the inflation rates at this point, I think Ijakuja as a surprise. Ah, it was expected. Kind of, yeah. Okay. But bado mtaendelea kuweka hizo makucha na bado mtavaa hizo hiyo. Tutajaribu kufika bay, so. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, a beautiful way ya kuambia government in your face. Yeah? <laughs>
Uh, but at least as a uh, terms zenu zita change. Yo, eh, maze unakapoa, ah, ni God, ni God. <laughs> <laughs> Sa hii ukitokea vile unakaa, ukitokea ukiwa in your natural looks. Mdo kuza, eh, maze nini mbaya. Sikuizu paki makeup, ah, ni KRA. <laughs> <laughs> vile unakaa, asa niteni sana watu makofi yao. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Niliwambia, we have a very interesting conversation for you. Please join us on the other end of this commercial break where Caliph Cairo, Beatrice, Atieno, and Elijah Nyakoyo are joining us for a very interesting conversation that includes guiding airplanes in the air safely. See you in a bit. Asante sana, welcome back to the weekly edition. I'm your host, Dr. King. So we are Leo Mimi. First of all, I can't wait to get into it. We have a panel which I believe, and I stand corrected, is a team that is responsible. Yandege kupanda ju na kuterem kachini. One of our guests, Kalif Kairo, mnamjua na mambo ya magari kuuza madinga and stuff. Na mili kwa nafikiri na jua mambo ya udi peke yake. Leo ni megundua, ama lately ni megundua na jua mbaka mambo ya boeng. Sijua da, sijua da. <laughs> but he um, he's a, a, a pilot. I'm uh, a private license. Yake juicy, and he's now looking for a commercial uh, license. Our other guest is a veteran in the aviation industry. I'm a wakuko komiaka mob. Zana will get to know more about him. Plus a secret I'll leak to you before tomorrow's show. Na ana jok piga story po sana. So I trust you will enjoy a conversation with him. Also a beautiful story. Uh, ladies in the aviation industry. I'm fanya air traffic control. Control. Beatrice Atieno is in the house. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Beatrice, I'll start with you. Uh, kwa air traffic control, you guys are responsible. Kwa kusema kama ndege itaenda, ama itaenda. Ukisema hautoki yapa, hautoki, right? Uh, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. You, but you have the power. Uh, I'll say we have uh, guiding principles. Yes. Yo, so by the time I tell you you're not going, I yes. have to have a very valid reason for operational purposes. And by the time I'm telling the pilot you're not able to go, on the other end, because we, we have a mutual understanding and our operating standards that we have. So for me to tell the pilot that you're not able to go, I must have a reason which is okay. valid and which is operationally acceptable. So in the history of air traffic control, hakuna mtu anaweza simamisha ndege for personal reasons because I assume <laughs> <laughs> I assume mali niko mm. uh, from what I look at as the idea of a tower where you guys operate mna kuanga kwa kikio kikubwa mnaona mandege zote you can't just stop the plane to admire it I will advise you before I quit. Actually generally uh, the area air traffic control basically yes. it's a very sensitive area mm -hmm. that's number 1 and number two, my joy as a, an air traffic controller, ni kuona ndege imetoka on time, the passengers when you are on board, wamefika destination on time. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we have people who are connecting to other flights. And then the service delivery, you want to be the best, right? So, um, I will not just uh, sit there and say, me now, this one will not go because I want to admire. I have to teach a, a rude pilot a lesson. No, that, that, that's the, uh, that, that now requires, for you to be a good controller, you have to have emotional intelligence. So, you cannot just decide, because it's not about the pilot. Yes. You have, uh, we have so many stakeholders in that one airplane. We have uh, customers, we have people who have put their cargoes in there. So, in the process of punish the pilot, you are not only punishing the pilot, you are punishing the owner of that aircraft, you are punishing the workers when you are co-op, because even this lot, maybe mali ya mepak, kuna ndege inafaa kukuja ipak. You see? So, ukimdile hapo, kuna enye nafaa kulandi kuja hapo, ya nafaa kwa metoka menda. So, there, there are so many factors to consider, okay. and we have uh, procedures okay. that guide our operations, okay. which are very, they are in black and white. Okay. So, if I decide that you're not going, attend a complaint. Why, did, why was I delayed? You see? Okay. I can't a delay investigation will be done. And if it was not justified, then I'll have to own up and face the consequences. At any given time, when planes are in the air, yes. you have an account of how many planes are actually Zinapita. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Dr. Kingora may tell you that each single movement of a plane is accounted for. Each single movement? Each single movement. In yes. fact, it is accounted for on a second minute basis. There is no single time that uh, in the airspace you'll be having a plane and uh, uh, you don't know its whereabouts. Hmm. Uh, why? 
because uh, the air traffic controller is facilitated with uh, radar equipment. Okay. Yeah. That's and even you. without radar equipment, uh, the, there is a close coordination in terms of uh, managing the flight before uh, before entering the airspace. Ten minutes. In fact, it is ten minutes before entering into your airspace. That is Kenya airspace. Yes. You shall have gotten information. In fact, the pilot shall have made contact with the uh, area con uh, control unit. In my simplistic mind, yes. airspace means the map of Kenya Vlet Naichora yes. going to heaven. That is Kenyan airspace. Is that true? Because I hope that's true. Uh, do, do you that is true it? or not. Uh, why? Uh, from a layman point of view, yes. that may be true. Yeah? Yes. Now, from the technical point of view, the airspace uh, have, uh, uh, are, are subdivided. Okay. The airspace are subdivided. And the subdivision gets into even now uh, the, the, the designing the air routes, what we call normally the air routes. Yes. Barabara Zandege. Uh -huh. Yeah? Yes. And therefore, for a technical person in aviation, uh, it is defined uh, differently. That is, there are sectors like uh, for, for Nairobi, it yes. will have its airspace. Oh, there is an airspace defined. Nairobi? Yes, yes, defined. Yes. Okay. For Mombasa, there is an airspace defined. And I think that's where the, you guys are selfish because yes. uh, if that's how it works, if I own a 50 by 100, then going up, that means that's my air. <laughs> right? So you guys automatically just own Munagawana Ukoju, you are too easy to That's what happened. Cairo, yes. uh, is it possible? Because I know you've logged in some hours. Yes. Kwa ndege. Yeah. Uki wokoju, umai pitana na ndege ingine. No, actually, you'll, you'll see traffic. The only thing you have to adhere to is something <laughs> called, uh, we call it separation. Uh -huh. There are those uh, standard separation procedures. Uh, vertically, it's normally a, thou uh, a thousand feet, if I'm not wrong. No. Horizontally? It differs. It differs. It differs, yeah. it differs with, the, with, the, with, with the sort of airspace you're in. Yes. It also differs with the sort of type of the type of plane you're flying, and also the how busy the airport is. And the type of flight you're conducting. Yes. Because they, they, they are, uh, if I cut you short, there are flights that you can get and you can get a car, but you can get a Whereby, you can get a car. Yeah. Lazimu wangali a chin. Dege pia kona probox ya kona probox. Lazimu wane, kama una, una, maybe you can get a car, but you can get a car, 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 Yenye ni uko tu kwa cockpit na tumia hizo instrument. There are some very small planes, huh? yeah. four seater that have advanced equipment. They have that just bicycles. No, yeah, it's it's ukiangalia ni ndege ndogo inaweza ibwa tu nne pekee. But it has the most advanced equipment. Iko na iko na weather radar, iko na autopilot, iko na very good systems. Yes. Eh, na kuna zingine sasa kama hizi zetu za training, but it's it's a, it's it's a bare minimum aircraft. It's meant to make you hardcore. Ah. Eh, it teaches you the basics of flying. Apo tuazitanga Vasco da Gama ama Makopolo. <laughs> now, 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 it's not, basi, it's not like I'm assuming, like, if you can see traffic, yes, like, yes. you can't be on the plane I want to see Saimo. As in... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the thing is, no, no, from a, from a pilot perspective, eh, yes. we don't like seeing other planes. Why? Because uh, you see, you're just trying to avoid the risk of collision. In fact, you try and avoid the other person as much as you can. Yes. So, in fact, the controller trains will call you and tell you, especially I fly a lot around Wilson, they'll call you, they'll tell you, look, look out for a caravan coming from the west. A caravan mm -hmm. is a type of an aircraft. Look out for the caravan coming from the west. And then now you panic. Hey, um, Where is it? Because oh, you, hey, kwa sababu, things happen very fast with planes. One moment, you kumuona, the next moment, you... I'm a shy. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a so, you always try to... We use, it's, called, it's, it's a technique called uh, see, see and avoid. And when you fly in, uh, in, in, in a flight school, they teach you that a lot. Always try to look out. Don't spend too much time staring at your instruments. Try to look out. Because at times, kuna mtu maybe ataingia, kuna mtu maybe anafanya maneuvers, especially students, eh? Muko wengi kwa circuit. It's called the circuit, the traffic circuit around an airport. Okay. Like Wilson, guys are taking off, coming for an approach, land, not even landing, landing and then taking off again. It's called a touch and go maneuver. So, zikifanyo, at times you could be like three schools. 
there's the first plane, there's another plane, there's a third plane. So you have to, it, it teaches you how to avoid other traffic. So that even, even when you get to the advanced levels, you at least have that feel. It's called uh, sit, like situational awareness. You know where, where I'm flying, who's around me. So I took your instructions kwa radio. I you, you, you can even object to say, by the way, we're also in the same area. We'll try and look out for each other. Mm. What you've just described in layman's language yes. is what we call overlapping. Like, like <laughs> at, at, at times, eh, at times I'll, I'll actually explain something. Eh? Like, yes. the, like the airspace around Nairobi. Nairobi has, uh, has three areas. There's an area controlled by Sli. There's another area controlled by Wilson Tower. And there's another area controlled by the guys at Jomo. Those are, those, those are three different types of airspace. To cope more up to that point. Yes. So the area around Wilson is the busiest actually. It's more busier than Jomo in terms of traffic movements and ege. So ukiwa hapo, you need to be very keen kwa sababu there's so much, there are so many planes taking off and landing. And at times, you see even the, the, controls are, the controllers are, are, are human. So you also have to look out for whatever is happening around you. And you have to listen out to your radios. And then ukitoka ii e, 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 ya Nairobi, let's say we are flying to the Mara. Mara akuna, akuna tower. There's no tower in Mara. So you are on an open traffic frequency. So you have to listen out to that frequency so that if there's another aircraft in the area, mpangani. Let me so, just put it in that simple terms. So mpangani. So luxury, ya, eh? achi tuko kwa ndege, sasa tupige story kidogo. Ah, no, 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 ah, lazima. <laughs> hey, lazimu kwerade, especially for what we call bush flying. Like, you're flying to those small uh, uh, airports that don't have air traffic control. Kama izi maya strip za mara, umenda magadi, you've gone to a place like Masinga. It's, it's actually an airport, but hakunanga air traffic control. So what you have to do, you have to, you, have to call, you have to listen out to what we call a traffic frequency, which is basically a frequency where there are other pilots flying. So you'll, you'll just hear all sorts of chatter. Mtu mungine akugarisa, mtu mungine anasema anaingia malindi, mtu mungine anasema sijia kwa wapi. Then ukisikia, wewe kama uko maru, usikia kuna ndege ingine mara, now you listen out. Ah. And, then, and then now you say, look, we are approaching the mara, we'll be descending in the next five minutes. We are flying, let's say, to Kichwa Tembo. If you any traffic within Kichwa Tembo, advice for uh, any any conflict in traffic, please advise. Na kama kuna mtoko Kichwa Tembo, atakuambia, we are actually at Kichwa Tembo, we are also making the approach. So, hapo saa mnaanza saa kutaftana. And the name of the location has to be very specific. Yes, Always kuwa na mtu wati like you go fancy, like oh, unaingia Mara, but you don't want to say Mara, you say Matumbo. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, has, it, has, it has to be very precise. Yes. Last one, say, if, if, we are, if you are making an approach into Kichwa Tembo, you need to say, these first you first say which aircraft it is so you call out traffic traffic uh, from five yankee charlie charlie quebec that's the registration of the aircraft we are currently uh, we are currently descending through seven thousand feet we intend to make a landing at kichwa tembo any conflict in traffic please advise okay now th that's that's flying in an unco in an uncontrolled airspace okay but now if you're coming to jomo now before I again i enter the airspace i need to i need to call into the right frequency you say that if i buy my chopper with my own money. See, the end of ni gongeshe ni ingiye metaki dogo. I can't do that. Lazimu upangwe. Muni pang. Keep me me. Yes. Lazimu upangwe. Actually, uh, before ato wende kwa iyo chopa yako. Before you nunue, lazima we mwenye tuone uneza nini. You can fly that particular hel helicopter or whatever you have. I've bought it. Yes, it's in my home. Yes, I've trained like Kad Cairo. I can, I can ride it. Akuna, akuna, uh, uh, there's no room for stealing time like Umeboeka. And as you tell us why helicopters can't fly past 6 p.m. As in, is there, is there no, no room for Nimeboeka tu nataku ingia ewani? As in. Never ingia, but lazima utujulishe. Venye tu amesema. You have to make prior arrangements. Ndiyo tujue utakuwa. Okay. Tuku separate na ndege zingine. Because unajua siwe peke yako utafly kwa hiyo stare yako. Kuna ingine wanafly, so we have to accommodate everybody. Ah. In, in mm. other words, the airspace is not yours. The ndege ni yours. Ndege ni yako, lakini airspace siyo yako. Ata kama ntainuka tujua nyumba kidogo, like... Hiyo <laughs> <laughs> ni airspace yetu. <laughs> so where does your airspace start? At my roof? It is determined. Yes. And uh, why am I telling you the airspace is not yours? Anything, anything above ground, anything above, above ground near the airport, it is controlled. You can have your, your plot and you want to build, you have money, but it will be controlled by Kenya Civil Aviation Authority through regulations. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is not 
anything you want to do in the airspace. How near the airport? It is defined. Okay. What Actually, near the airport, it is 13 kilometers, th uh, 13 kilometers radius. Yes. Uh, there we control. As we close, uh, Cairo is one of the top importers of Magari in this country. He was for the longest time say, a brand ambassador. Check him out, uh, Kai and Caro, Cairo, Kai and Cairo on social media. Ukita Kagari, he is uh, your plug, but Leo Amekuja Kwasho specifically for aviation. Uh, an interesting fact about uh, Elijah, 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 Elijah. No, Elijah ni a Bible. Elijah. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> hey, man, interesting fact. Siku Wambia to Kianza show. Uh, he's the one gentleman who uh, I believe makes me feel guilty of making fun of landlords on this show because he was my first landlord at independence at my independence <laughs> <laughs> we've had a very good relationship and he has played a father figure to me for the longest time and it's an interesting thing uh, thank you. And, and thank you for 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 <laughs> And our biggest story come out, you go up. Beatrice, let me forgive because we also had another conversation to Nkwatu Nafa Kwanza, women in aviation. And I believe this conversation is so interesting, we can set it up again. In our way, we are my way. That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. King Ori.